I want to thank you for coming on, man. I, I really appreciate this. I, just to give everybody a, a quick uh, sort of explanation, I want to let you introduce yourself as well. But um, I was actually introduced to you uh, while discovering your YouTube channel. And we're going to talk a lot about this today. You've developed a, a sort of mentorship channel. But before we get into that, you know, you being a professional concept artist, I what I'd really love to get to know is just how you got into into art and how you developed into a, a concept artist. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, thanks again for having me. Um, I'm very happy to be here today. So um, how do I got into concept art? Um, actually, I wasn't an artist. I was actually someone who was interested in playing American football. That's what I was doing all my life. Um, I was playing American football and I tried to play in college, but that didn't work out for me. So I decided to study management at some point and which was interesting, but it never fulfilled me really. And then I had to deal with that. So I had to figure out what do I want to do in life? And I have a very smart father who's asking always a lot of questions and he saw I was very unhappy and he was asking me, how am I doing? And I told him everything and we had a lot of conversations. I'm having a lot of great conversation with my parents um, and they're both entrepreneurs. So we were just talking and then I took some time off to just discover myself and basically to figure out what I want to do. And accidentally, I found a YouTube video of Feng Zhu painting a production painting, which was in 2014 when this like when conceptart.org was still a thing, basically. Um, but I had a, <laughs> but I had a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I had a problem, which was, I couldn't draw a painted or I didn't have any clue of design. Um, and I never drew before. I wasn't an artistic kid in art school, uh, like in school, I basically like zoned out in my art classes. I wasn't interested at all. So I made completely a switch and I decided to, um, take drawing as training basically. And I trained myself, uh, started with 30 minutes a day, an hour a day which basically leveled up to almost 10 hours a day. And then I also need to figure out a plan. I made myself a plan. How can I give myself time to grow, to become a concept artist? I had to research how to get into games, how to get into movies. It's still hard today to get really into these jobs because these jobs are so little, right? Um, so I tried to figure out to get a plan and I basically studied industrial design and then step by step set myself goals after four years, got my first internship. And then I worked in movies. I also worked in games um, and I stayed in games for the last five years. So worked as a concept artist, did characters, environments, props, the whole thing. Um, yeah. And it's a really interesting transition going and I, and I can relate to that, you know, having so many different interests and also playing sports, but I'm curious. So when, when you were young, where did you have any creative interests at all? Was that something that just purely came out of, out of the blue through this journey? Not at all. So like my mother would say, like I was a, I, I was supposed to be an artist because when I was a kid, I drew a couple of pages and she was like she really liked it um she's also an artist actually so the thing is also i was i would say always surrounded my life with art so my mom is a painter she's a really good painter and she took me also to portrait classes she was teaching i was the model there but i wasn't interested in what they were doing in this class at all i was just sitting there um i i went there to help basically um we went to my parents took me to museums i was always looking so i think i had maybe a good eye but i wasn't interesting interested in, in anything and um when i started my art journey it was like a world opening up for me so i got start i, got, I really got started interest being interested in old masters in in uh, new mediums in digital art in traditional art i was very captivated by traditional art actually um but since I knew I needed to be good in Photoshop, I was like focusing always on doing digi digital stuff. Um, yeah. 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 I, I don't mean to unpack it too much, but I, I always find it fascinating when somebody like yourself, when you get to a place where like for me, for example, I can correlate mm -hmm. to art was always a part of it was something that I was always doing, but I wasn't actually very intentional about getting better. I was very good at replicating and copying and all of that. So my, you know, my journey, I'm sure plenty, plenty of people can relate, was very much about trying to undo a lot of bad habits. So mm -hmm. for yourself who 
kind of made the intention to do it without having much practice, did you find that that kind of gave you a drive and a motivation to, to push through and, and, and elevate very quickly? Mm, um, yes and no, I would say. So the thing is, when I started, I was very bad. So I told my parents, I told my girlfriend, I told everyone I wanted to do this job. And then I was drawing, they looked over my shoulder and they were like, okay, that's what you want to do for work. Okay, let's, let's do it. You know? Um, so I think they didn't flinch me, but it was a very long way to me for me. And I accepted it right from the get go. And I knew I wasn't good, but I knew I'm very sturdy person. And when I want to achieve something, I just work through it. And uh, I felt like, okay, drawing is a skill. Painting is a skill. It's a craft you can learn. Even the sense for design. Taste is a little bit different, but learning uh, basically to craft a design from start to finish is also something you can learn. So I always thought, okay, maybe I will not be the most amazing or the most craziest, but I will definitely be an artist and I will be happy. And uh, for me, I, I remember my first studio job. Um, the first two weeks, I had like butterflies in my stomach. Every day when I walked to work, I was like the most happiest person. <laughs> I worked like over 40 hours a week. Yeah. I probably was miserable uh, visually, but inside of me, I was so happy. Like, uh, yeah, it, it was it was the best. And it was also crazy because I, when you set yourself the goal, and I think a lot of people can relate, when you set yourself the goal, and I don't know how, how it was for you, but... Um, you set yourself a goal to work in a studio. And, and I told you, I also became over this past a teacher and a mentor. And I have a lot of people I teach and they all kind of want to get into games and movies. So they all have this goal, right? And this goal becomes such a high thing to achieve. And you go on this journey and you know it maybe takes you three years, four years, maybe five years. For me, it really didn't matter. I knew I need to give myself time. So this is why I decided to study industrial design because I know it gave me three and a half years so, because in Germany, you get financial support by the government. But for other people, maybe they don't have the time. So if you know you have this goal and it takes you like four to five years, you really have to be like, okay, I want to do this. And no matter what, it will be hard, definitely tough. You will have down times, but you have to just stick to the plan, basically. And yeah. You have to keep reminding yourself why you're doing it. You know? Yeah, I I think that's such really great advice. It makes me think. You know, the for me personally, I've I've voiced this in other channels. I I, I always find, and this is just through experience, that the the harder the better. You know, putting yourself in, or rather, or at least accepting that that it will be challenging and knowing that it's not going to be easy. And and when you're presented with many challenges, but you want something so so eagerly. You, you find something in yourself, but especially, I mean, I think this is in every aspect of life, but creatively speaking, something comes out of you. It's like, I, I can correlate and rem I remember that feeling so well, that, that giddiness and excitedness when you get, when you get whatever that first thing is, when you step into like a professional realm and, and what it feels like and how empowering it is and also how scary it is. And I think for for the magma community, you know, we have a, a, a massive community and people of all different walks of life, different skill levels, many of which are are um, in a younger age age range that are probably getting close to a place where they're starting to consider, you know, careers or going to college and, and studying art or maybe heading into the concept art realm. And it can be scary. But I'm sure you can relate and, and agree that, you know, the, that process, it, although it is scary, the, the fear kind of goes away once you kind of buckle down and you get into that excitement phase. And the fear is actually a good thing because it gives you the indication that it's first very important for you and um, it has a lot of meaning. So I think fear also comes a little bit of not knowing what will come, but these challenges and these problems you maybe face they make you the person who you are. And I think when it also comes to your personal development, um, it is important, of course, that you work on your hard skills, that you work on your soft skills, that you try to become a better artist, but you also should try to become a better person. And these challenges, like setting yourself a goal for three years and working towards this and achieving this, like it not only gives you goosebumps, it also shows you what person you are. Like yeah. you can, you understand at this moment, okay, Basically, I can achieve 
everything I want to achieve. And it's, it sounds super cliche, but this is how it is, right? If right. you want to get into medicine, you have to learn seven years, eight years. Um, and you maybe think in between, like, I will never be able to do that. But this is the great thing about humans and human behavior and the human brain and how, how we learn, you know, like sometimes, like for me, it was also, I had to learn how to learn in the beginning. I was happy about every mistake and everything I need, I learned new. But I also had to figure out how do I learn and how do I make decisions and what works out for me? Because if you buy a tutorial from someone, for example, you buy some, a tutorial on painting or designing, that this certain process works maybe for this one person, for this one artist, but it doesn't necessarily work for you. So you need to constantly self-reflect and need to think about, okay, what do I do? I have a lot of mentees who have trouble with like just staying on track they have really good skills you know and uh, when they come into the mentorship i test the skills and i see okay they have a great skill set already we need to continue to work and then we work on portfolio work but also i need to show them okay how do you stay mentally there like we work on hard skills and soft skills you need to figure out how do i have a artistic routine every day because i believe as an artist or if you want to achieve for example professionality or basically to become a professional, you need to behave like a professional. So you have to do art every day and you have to treat it that way. Um, it's the same as professional sport. If you want to become a professional sports man or woman in a certain um, category, you have to train every day. And this this all comes together. I don't know. How did you handle that when you when you went on your journey? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. For, for me, it was it was very similar. It was, you know, I although I wasn't, I was an artist from, from a really young age. I mean, I wouldn't even classify some myself as a, as an actual artist, but I loved to, I love to build things. I love to draw. I, I had so many interests and that was, mm. I think one of my biggest challenges is learning how to focus and how to uh, harness that into a particular category, whatever it was that I was doing. And I actually, I, I went, I went to, to, went to college to study fine arts and, and I was in a place that wasn't really, I was in, in, in Michigan for me. And it wasn't, it was a, it was a great fine arts education and, uh, you know, focus, but my interest lied more in the digital arts and the, the industry and all of that didn't really exist there. I started to get very insecure about what was going to happen to me when I, you know, got done with this program and where I was going to go and how disconnected I would be. So I, I made it really hard for myself and I, I just did a full 180, not a 180 pivot, but more so just a pivot in a different direction and, and relocated mm -hmm. to, to Los Angeles. And I put myself right in the heart of where all, you know, so many talented and, and incredible people are in, in VFX. And, and I came to find very quickly that I was not up to scratch, you know, to, mm -hmm. to be able to, to compete. And, and it wasn't about competition. It was more so, you know, I think for a lot of us with, with creative minded people and with everybody in general, the, Sometimes th that need to, to prove yourself and for whatever, whatever reason is driving that need to prove yourself, I think it's different for everyone. But I realized that, you know, initially I had this drive and desire to, to want to, to achieve that. And knowing that I had such a hill to climb, it was, I was very similar to you where I would, I mean, I would, you know, going to college and studying you know, animation and film, I, I just I became a lab tech I would spend 16 hours a day just consuming information and practicing and practicing and practice practicing maybe to a fault you know where I pushed myself so much that um it, it helped me to to kind of skyrocket to a place where I could start to understand things at the very least and feel a confidence mm. and then once I had that confidence I was able to kind of self-evaluate to your point earlier on just reflecting on like what are my pitfalls what are the things being more open-minded to, to know the things that I'm not good at and things that I, I can change by learning from other artists around me and seeing how other people deal with things. And the communal aspect I've found to be incredibly important uh, in any aspect of art. The more that you can collaborate and work with people, the more you can be open-minded to it, receiving feedback, of course, and mm. uh, putting yourself out there, even if your work isn't great so much is gained from that experience as an artist and then this new door opens up in a way that you know you 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 now are in a new place where you can start to you know creatively come up with ideas on your own because i feel like for me it was and i and i could I, I i had plenty of people that i connected with through my walk of life that were very similar that 
And we get you get really good at replicating and seeing what other people are doing, but pure creation is is really challenging. Being able to authentically yeah. come up with your own ideas and develop something that's not from I mean everything co art comes from something else always, but mm -hmm. you know there is sort of like a, a gray area in there that is kind of yours still, and that was the biggest challenge for me. So yeah, it's it's quite a quite a transition. I, I and I wanted to ask you in 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 your experience in the professional realm, which which game studio did you work for? Uh, so I worked for a mobile game company, which is called Vuga. I was there for the last, uh, let me think, four years. Um, I started there actually. So I came out of movies when I joined Vuga. And uh, it was very interesting because they had a character designer uh, position open. And I was uh, doing an art test. So when you try to get into a studio, of course, you have to do an art test. And I made an art test on a character and I got invited to an interview. And the interview process at Vuga is it's a full day. So you have a lot of um, interviews with other people and they try to test you and they give you like these quick assignments where you have to look over stuff. And, and um, in, I think my last talk uh, was they asked me if I also have other work which I could show. And since I came from game uh, out of movies, I had a environment design portfolio with me as well. So I had two portfolios basically. And they liked the environments even more than the characters. And this is how I got into VUGA. And it was for me a very joyful ride at VUGA because VUGA is um, a very great also community, but also a great place to work. It was always like, working with your friends, not with colleagues, you know, it was uh, always a really cool, harmonious work environment there. And I grew as a person a lot. I learned a lot about working in a big company because VUGA was growing from 200 to, I think they're like 350 people now. It's like a really wow. big studio and they have a lot of game titles and you learn to work with designers, with writers, with uh, game designers, with um, art leads, how to communicate. And I I really learned a lot there. Um, of course, also hard skills because you do work every day, but also to manage yourself, manage tasks. And for me, it was, um, it was actually very interesting because after a year, uh, I joined there as a junior. After a year, I got intermediate and I got used to the process. And for example, uh, it was in 2018, I always wanted to do YouTube but I did not know what I wanted to do. So eventually I just did my first video, I think was how to do value studies. And I realized that videos and making videos is actually just a different form of art, just combination of visual images, moving images and sound also. So it was an extra level and it was, it, it, it was a lot of fun. It, it felt again, I had this butterfly feelings again of, learning something new. Um, and I just continue to that. I just stick with that. And I did YouTube for a year. Um, then, of course, I, I am very ambitious. So I tried to hit like 1,000 subscribers. It took me a year to get there. Um, then I think I my next goal was to do 2,000 in the next year because I thought that this is how long it takes. But of course, YouTube is a snowball effect. So it took yeah. me in like, I think after a year, I had like tripled. So it was like 3,000 subs. Um, and then uh, I also started to get uh, asked by schools around here in Berlin to teach on site as a teacher because obviously I was doing all, uh, mostly educational content. So I was doing like small tutorials. Um, I went to events in Paris where like students come to get into the industry where you meet a lot of concept artists. Um, I met Feng Zhu there for the first time. Wow. Um, that... And it was like, a, there was the circle closed basically. Yeah. <laughs> I was super nervous, by the way, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's a different story. Um, yeah, so uh, I did that. And then um, I had a Patreon in, I started a Patreon and I had a third tier, which was mentorship. And I was like, okay, I have to, like, I, I saw like other Patreon tiers and I thought like, well, um, the other guys, they always have mentorship. So I just, I just offer some, I did like a arbitrary number in there. And then, um, uh, I got like, I think it was like in November or October, there was a the guy like asking, Hey, can I get into your mentorship? And I was like, 
you want to get in my mentorship? What, like, are you serious? Um, you're talking to me? <laughs> and, uh, you know, he was actually, it was serious. And then he got in and it was a process because it's completely different of, like, I taught full classes with 35 people composition and then you prepare a prep like a presentation on composition and you make exercises with all of them together, right? But one-on-one -on -one is different because when someone comes in, you are fully committed and then you ask them, okay, what's what's going on in your life like where you stand um, do you live alone do you have a part-time job how much time do you have for art in a week what's your goal do you want to work in games how much experience you have and for me it was a very new experience to learn how to teach people one-on-one -on -one. and um yeah and that was a process and this evolved basically then i did this mentorship thing for over two years now and uh it came to the point where I could say, well, um, I because I started to have like not only my VUGA studio job where I was working 40 plus hours a week, I was also doing mentorship, producing YouTube videos, going to events, etc. was another 40 hours. So I was starting mm -hmm. to work 80 hours a week for almost two years. Um, and uh, in the beginning, I liked the challenge, but then after a while, I realized, okay, I cannot do that for much, much longer mm. because it's just like I had to really stay on top of like doing sport in between, taking enough breaks um, because I you need to stay mentally there. I had like my calendar was full. I started seven in the morning, um, did like day preparation stuff. Then I went to the VUGA job, worked for eight hours, eight to nine hours, and then I got back into the mentorship calls. So... Uh, my day was always full from Monday to Sunday. On this um, topic of this transition, so being a professional, mm -hmm. I, I understand that. I mean, the, the, there must be such a massive drive and, and a, an incentive for you, something that you get a reward from going from a professional artist to transitioning fully into doing this mentorship program. So I, I've gone ahead and pulled up your your YouTube channel. And so I'd love to know, you know, when, when you get when you got started into this and where you've how you've transitioned into this now, how are you handling, and, and maybe one thing to mention too, just for, for the Magma community, this is one of the reasons why we wanted to talk to you because our community is, is full of people at different skill levels. And what you're doing is essentially bringing this, this channel and this space to help others elevate their skills through your experience and, 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 and you know, the things that you've seen in the professional market. What, what do you, where do you start there and how do you focus on, on developing other skills and helping them get to where they want to go? So that's actually a really good question. So when I do YouTube videos or in the past, when I did YouTube videos, I was always either focusing on things I want to do personally, like if I want to do like a lot of sketchbook videos because I want to draw more um, or if I want to do go on events, do I want to talk to people which I'm interested in to know about? I always felt like I, I just want to make some benefit for others. If it's just one single information which is helping you when you watch any video, then I am happy about that. And that was always the goal. For, and this is still the goal for any video because not, ev not every video is for everyone. You know, like some people, they see a tutorial here, they already have the information. So um, this is always trying to do that. But when I started to teach people one-on-one, -on -one, I had also to find a way how to work with them in the best way. And um, in the beginning, it wasn't easy because I gave my first mentees in 2018, I gave them like just assignments and I worked with them on their hard skills. But you also need to figure out, I had, for example, someone who wanted to get into a, a big college and an art college. So we had to build their portfolio. So I had to research what they had to bring into the portfolio to apply there. Then I had people who wanted to get into a studio. Um, I had people who I got into studios in Spain. Um, then we have, I have also people who are just done with school and they are in their first freelancing mode and they have a lot of anxiety of delivering. So they basically constantly with me, we just talk sometimes. We just talk about how you think, like, how's it going? How's the first job going? Because they cannot share everything because it's NDA. Um, but I'm just mentally supporting them because, of course, there's this pressure on them. So it, it was re really a natural process of getting used to it. Now, of course, everyone who comes into the program, I test the skill level of them. So I basically test 
what they can do with different exercises. And uh, also this process is evolving, right? So right. in the beginning I had like, in, the, in my first year I had like one mentee and my second year I had, I think at the end of the year I had seven mentees and then this tripled in the year afterwards. And then it, it just got more and more and more. So um, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's for me also interesting because I would never thought that besides being an artist, I would be so, interested in being a teacher and so passionate about it but it is like you say very very rewarding when you see someone who is getting hired like this is a big achievement when someone tries to get into because people sometimes forget how little these spots are in these studios right um they're like big studios but the art department is just a part of it and then they only have like five spots and then they just maybe hire like one person every three to six months maybe um there are not many internships uh, when you want to get hired as a junior most studios they don't want juniors they want actually intermediate people they can pay as juniors so <laughs> there's so much stuff going into so which you have to stay on top um and from like since i made this journey myself i realized okay i just want people to to get to the same point as i did um but I am not stopping com continuing to be an artist, right? Um, so I'm still freelancing. I'm still um, doing art every day. But now, like since I'm a um, almost like almost in my in my work time full time teacher, uh, I have now the freedom to work also on my own artistic things because, you, as you know, um, when you work in the studio forty hours plus a week, like there's all your creative energy going there, right. and. Uh, when I was still working in the studio, like I, we have a monthly um, live stream on Twitch and a, it was an evening for me and I was all, 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 always tired and dead and dizzy in my head because I was working <coughs> nine hours before. And then I knew I had to sit there and stream for two hours and right. talk to the community. And <laughs> right. so, um, yeah. It takes a lot out of you, but have you found that, uh, that the, this transition into education, have you mm -hmm. seen your, your skills and your, your, your eye change as an artist? Has it helped you evolve in a different way? Absolutely. I uh, realized what I actually know, like, because when you have to teach people things, you really have to know what you talk about. Right. Um, and the more you do it, the more you understand what do you actually know? Um, uh, same goes for what you also know, what you don't really know hundred percent. So I went back into research and then also how do you explain something complex as for example design to someone because since to this day today we still have tons of people who do paint beautiful images and put them in their portfolio but there's not much design in there they can show that they can paint they maybe understand composition but these are just a part of the whole fun foundations right um a lot of people they still call themselves concept artists but they're actually in illustrators because they just paint illustrations so um, yeah, and learning, for example, something like design has a lot to do with manipulating emotions or to evoke an emotion in someone who's observing what are you showing. Um, and for this, you have to understand stuff like shapes, balance, active side, passive side. There's so much stuff going in. So to answer your question, yes, absolutely, it did. It 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 um, elevated my understanding. I would say um, maybe not my executional part because like I would would have to focus even more on executing the new knowledge. Um, but I believe this is also a process. Um, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, that it, it, as you say, the amalgamation of all those things that first, the first step is is, is really understanding and, and the application is kind of its own process. It seems that, you know, in, in each of us kind of has our own mental blocks sometimes that will, mm. you know, slow down the progress. But as long as you seek to, to, to gain that knowledge and, 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 and get past the fear part and engage yourself and intentionally go in to try to grasp those things. Eventually, at some point in your life, those things will start, they, they become comfortable, right? Like there's, there's something that you feel like you know, like you know your left arm, you know, it's 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 like mm -hmm. a, a confidence in yourself, it's in you. And and they they it seems, from my observations, it seems to come out and pour out as long as you keep pushing and you keep trying and, and surrounding yourself with people like yourself that, um, that are sharing this information and reminding you of this all the time. Absolutely. And sometimes you also need to stop. You need to stop and 
like do like a check back like what am i doing right now is it is it working for me is it am i on the right track because sometimes of course like you have you take a path but it's not linear right it's going left right and sometimes you have to figure out okay after two years of chasing something like getting into a game studio um do i actually perform or do i actually hit certain milestones and i believe this is also why my milestones are very important like super small goals and to understand also that like and i see this is a really big problem right now is like to get to something very fast is not possible especially when it's that big you know i um, mean even though like the art community grows and we get more artists we also get more people who want to work but we do not necessarily get more job capacities. I mean, these studios, they, they, we get more studios, but um, right. they not grow as fast as we get artists. Also, the majority of artists, they get better and better. So you also technically need to stay on top of your game. Um, but nevertheless, I would say the most important thing is that you figure out who you are and what you want to do and that you do what you like. And that you not try to do something that is just a reflection of what you think other would like, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and because I have this right now, I focus more on my artistic inner voice, and I like try to challenge myself with doing stuff from my imagination. Because as you, I was also like, and this is how we used to learn and this is how they artists in the past learn they copied other artists mm -hmm. right and it's it's actually kind of funny this whole ai thing in a way when you think is like um back in the days when old artists or master artists copied other master artists we maybe did not know who they copied right but today we have a proof when someone is taking a prompt and takes an artist from like who's whoever he's taking um we have the proof of who's the source of it, right? So, but technically it's the same thing. Right. Right. So it's, it's still this copying mode. So um, also this is why I believe it's even more important that we start not only to work on the hard skills like we, do, we know, but we also need to work on skills like imagination and being more creative because this whole AI debate also came to the table and maybe shows that, okay, maybe we also need to figure out how can we be more creative? How can we find different ways of be creative, right? There's like so many different methods of creating something. Um, and yeah, but I think I drifted a little bit off here. No, no, I, 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 I was, I was, I was, I was actually very captivated by that. And I think uh, it, at some point here, I want to actually get to how people can in, join your mentorship program and, and, and go into that. But since, you did open up that can of worms on the AI topic. I think what you said resonates very, very much. And it's a great analogy looking back on, you know, in a time when visibility was was limited, uh, if not almost invisible when it comes to, you know, traditional uh, classically trained artists and, and where that inspiration comes from. I mean, you could extrapolate and I'm sure absolutely say that, you know, <laughs> there was some pure original creativity, but you, if you, as you watch, I always kind of think of it, and this is my personal take on, on just the human nature aspect as to how we evolve as people. And this this goes for everything, not just art, but for everything. But we we consistently change. We started with the the traditional fine arts, and and these things transition today. I mean, the the places that you start now, if you're going through pure education, you're still starting with value and form and shape and line and prop and proper composition, and all of these aspects are always going to be a part of that process but that process was developed by you know these these classical if you think back to renaissance artists or or before this this transitional evolution you know we've gone through in the digital age now that the topic of ai is is a, a um it, it, it is a poignant one and it is very obviously hotly debated there's a, a very big divide you know here at magma it's, it's not this isn't a secret we we've been in in beta development for 
in incorporating stable diffusion within magma so you you have pure creation tools and you have collaboration so you can have up to 30 people in the canvas and then on top of that soon you will be able to generate images with with stable diffusion so being able to iterate being able to in paint and out paint and the the divide or the, the conversation is a fascinating one but I, you know, when you think about the transition of the digital age taking over practical effects and and how thinking just in visual effects alone, how backgrounds were never green screen and, and CG sets, they were matte paintings, they were individuals that would go in and paint some of the most beautiful paintings you've ever seen in your life. And that was their job. It was rapid iteration. It was going through and creating these things. And, and that's just one aspect. So much has been replaced by the digital age, and there was a a transformation there that that many people were against in those digital tools. And I think that that same conversation is occurring now within the the AI conversation. And to your point on how important it still is to find creative ways to keep evolving yourself, it seems to be. And this is you know our position at Magma is we truly believe that pure creation is going to be a consistent thing that will never go away. That is something that you're going to continue to do. If anything, AI images may become more commonplace and may become more of a style. You know, there, there's, it's so hard to know. We can't say for certain that's the beauty of human nature is that things change and you introduce new variables and something new comes out of it. But because of that, by accepting that perspective and knowing that it's still important to, to practice your pure creativity and, and use AI tools in a way that, that is meaningful and makes sense, not to ruin the creative process. I, we believe you know, here at Magma that that's a responsibility factor that falls onto the artists themselves. And setting industries and professions aside, that, that is one of those unfortunate things that occurs that oftentimes, you know, I personally don't like to hang my head on this too often where you know, I don't want to always just say that, um, it, well, you can't stop it. So, you know, you can't beat it, join it. That is like a very simplistic way of looking at it. But mm. I, I personally like to look at it a little bit deeper and say that, you know, this is, this is your, this is your life. This is your pursuit. Would you rather spend your time just rapidly iterating images through prompts and, and kit bashing images, or are you looking to enrich yourself in a different way? And that is the beauty of art. And the way that we use these things is purely up to us. So, yeah. you know, here at Magma, we're trying to incorporate both of those and, and embrace this and move forward into this digital age and, and actually try to help change or, or rather affect the conversation by building a community of people that are not only looking to use these tools, but looking to create things that are, that are their own and, mm -hmm. and not rely on a system to do it. I, I'm curious to know from your perspective, how do you feel about uh, you know, in the concept art industry, as these tools grow, where do you see that heading, and and what's your perspective on where it where it will go? If you so, can, say. so I would say you diff so just getting back to your point. So I think you said definitely some very important points, which is this transition or transformation of medium in a way. So when it was from traditional to digital. Um, I highly, I, I, I very much agree on that. And I think also in the past, it was scary for traditional artists when digital art came, but they did, couldn't see, like, we cannot look into the future. So right now we do not know what is out there still with AI, right? Um, so I think there are certain things which AI technically will never can replace, which is something like human emotions. So when someone is displaying a scene, which is a memory and is there to give a emotional reaction to the viewer, or someone can relate emotionally to that, I believe this will be very hard for AI to, to make up, right? Because this like just giving AI the variables of these emotions is like a big task in its hand itself. Um, I think also that AI will find its place in things like game pipelines um, or movie pipelines. Uh, someone told me that, um, I don't know if you know the game Starfield that uh, Bethesda is working on that they already used um, a AI for randomized planets in their open world sci-fi game, which is in itself a very cool thing because usually there are these level designers who poorly have to build these 
worlds every day by planting a tree here, planting a rock there and stuff. And if you have something which is um, helping you with this process and makes life easier, then I believe it's a good thing, you know. Um, on the other side, this it's yeah. So I think we are not asking the right questions right now in the moment, but I think also it's not very clear what question we should ask, if that right. makes sense. No, because... I think that's a great point. And, and I want to highlight uh, Jigger, uh, is it Jigger Munchie? I'm going to bring this up. Jigger Munchie? Yeah, if we're saying that correctly, we apologize. He's suggesting that the problem with AI art isn't the fact that it's effortless, but it, it, that it's that it's used, uses art essentially stolen from online and, and mishmashed together. Artists who never sign up for it now have AI to replicate them. And I, I want to say I, I think that that is that's a great point to bring up. And you know, I, I want to get your perspective on this, but I'll say from Magma, one of the things that the, our position on this is that as we step into this realm, we are going to continue pushing and developing our core pure creation tools and heading into these professional markets and, and, and doing the things that offering the tool sets and evolving this, the, this, this space, just as it has always done since the introduction of digital arts and as has, as that's evolved with that said, you know, we feel it's the responsibility of these systems, these AI tools themselves. I mean, we are simply incorporating stable diffusion and, and, and using that within magma. That's, that's where we'll be heading. But, uh, I think we couldn't agree more that this is something that needs to be addressed. And and what I've observed as this equation is kind of like playing out with these new introductions of variables and in, in, in people that are having their voices being heard through social media and other places. And it's a very loud conversation. You've seen ArtStation is now offering the ability to 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 tag your artwork to not be used within a system. And that that's a I see that as a, a step forward in a positive direction that needs to continue to evolve. These should not be tools to replace artists. They should be tools to enhance the, the creative process. You know, there, there is something to be said about, I've always kind of thought about this personally, that for me as an artist, if, as I've evolved, I always put, uh, I hung my hat on the amount of effort and time that was spent in a piece of art. Of course, sure, it's it's absolutely important in, to be able to show that you understand composition and all these other things. but. You know, there was like this badge of honor, you know, in, in within my circles of, of creative friends, you know, like spending so much time and staying up late and doing all this work. It seems that with, with AI images, it, it, it's even more frustrating because it, it just happens in a second and there's no time, there's no work applied to it and, and developing your style and how much time it took to get there. That that is a, a big, a big, uh, I think part of that conversation that is hard for for us collectively to to get through but i believe and we believe at magma that that will play out as this evolves as long as us we as artists unite and 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 speak our minds and and try to help shape this into something that will be meaningful for us that it will it will play out in a way that 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 it probably always would and and we can be a part of this conversation and just not out of our control i'm curious to know what you think about that comment and and um and that response mm -hmm. so um i would say definitely i am on like i don't like i oh, of course i'm on the side like if someone's work would get stolen by someone else and it's n even not credited but also like taken away and just basically sold or um took advantage uh, i want to say that like in general since ai is there it new things or change is always very uncomfortable and as you said like ai is this new variable in our industry now we need to figure out how we deal with upcoming problems and issues and this is definitely an issue and a problem um but on the other side it is also we are still in the process so we still don't know how this will evolve I'm just thinking right now about something because I talked with my buddy uh, Paul about this two days ago about online sales. When COVID came, online sales got into like you see the numbers, they got huge, right? Everyone was into online sales. And now Amazon just fired tons of people because their sales goes down because they they basically hired tons of people because they believe that we'll continue with that. But now people are not interested anymore so much in buying stuff online they want to go back into the store they want to smell the yeah. things they want to touch the things so they changed the need changed the behavior changed 
So I believe that eventually this also will change and adjust. Um, and also things that grow rapidly, they always attract also the wrong people, right? So if we have any stuff like crypto, like we had a lot, a lot of crypto scams, right? Now we have a lot of people who try to make money just with the tool of AI, uh, basically to take someone and then ripping their work and sell it somewhere. But interesting would be, let's say you as a person, as an artist, someone on the other side of the world, and this is just a random thought, but if someone on the other side of the world, right, would find your work in the internet and would print it out, go outside on the street and sell it every day and make a little bit of money with it, but you wouldn't even know about it, right? So, and they would do this maybe every day for a year, but you will never really know that this work like gets gets stolen by this person every day, right? So now we have this obvious hint that people are taking the prompt of the artist and then basic, but the thing is, what do they do with it, mm -hmm. right? Because I feel like a lot of people who are showcasing, oh, wow, I made this with AI, um, they, I have the feeling, and this is just my personal feeling, they're not real artists. Like if I ask myself, will AI takes the joy of me making art away ever? No, not at all. If that will take your joy away of making art, just because it makes everything so easy, then you maybe were never really into making art because of the purpose of making art, right? right. Because if you want to make money, you can do whatever. You can go in the stock market. You can do so many different things, right? You don't need to make art. Mm -hmm. Most artists, they, they are artists because they love being art. And I think we should focus on that. We should focus on why we are artists, why we make art. Of course, we should protect our properties and our things we create as good as we can. But like you said, eventually, we could never do that. Like, even the people in the past, they could never protect their own work, you know, and they didn't have the threat of AI. But some people came and then they looked at it and they learned from it and they stole a bit here and they stole a bit there and then they make them their own. And this is how art evolved over hun hundreds of years. So it's right now, we are right in the middle, I believe. And what we should do is keep a calm head and we should not try to hype us up on things like social media, you know, because I believe that the whole social media movement um, is just, yeah, it's it's just like gasoline into the fire. Mm. It's basically because it's a, a serious topic. And I have like, like a heads up for all the, uh, the YouTube creators and everyone who's making reports and making videos on ed educating people on that and basically um, talking about this, this topic and helping and informing. Because it's important. Um, but eventually we are in this process of learning what's happening. And we should keep a cool head and should not try to to basically, yeah, be angry and be like, yeah, uh, like toxic and try to like go on the barricades and like yell and whatever. Because at some point, I, I, I don't know what how this transition will end or where this transition will end. Right. Um, it's a good because Oh, sorry. sorry. You continue your thought. I just want to say, like, I just want to say, I still believe. Maybe I'm just a dreamer, but I still believe there also will be a good thing in the transition of having AI in our daily world, because I believe there will come things which will help us in in our like in our daily habits, because this is like why we actually like look for these things, why we search for new endeavors. Right. Yeah, it, it, I, I think what you said is, is wonderful and it's 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 a great insight into, uh, I think, a, a very positive outlook on where things can go. And when it comes to, you know, to your, to your comment on social media and, and the engagement of the conversation, and, you know, everyone's opinion is important here. And and the challenge is that the, the, these topics that are very divisive, we live in a very divisive culture now with the internet and accessibility to information. And it absolutely, it, uh, you know, my observations is that it, spe it, 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 it kind of puts, it plays into the human nature aspect as to how we evolve collectively and how the collective mindset is, is changing things. And, and oftentimes it does, the outcome 
it seems to be that there there's more fear develops because you hear so many different things and we see mm -hmm. other things happening with technology and industries and all these aspects of life you know that that we kind of go along with on this journey together and each of us has different perspectives but you know that the the when it comes to art i i I support and believe that there is a way to, by interjecting yourself and as you say, you know, calling yourself a dreamer, I think that that's probably the most important thing to, to continue mm -hmm. to strive to be, is to be dreamers mm -hmm. and to try to help shape these things and to not let it take control of you because that's where my observations in my personal life is that ultimately that's where the fear comes from. That's where the fear of lo losing this, this art form, you know, like, I, if I extrapolate back to the the practical age to the digital age, you think about what it what it meant for those people that were working practically. They didn't want to transition to the digital tools. They they chose many of them chose not to, and the mm -hmm. ones that chose to were a part of this new revolution of art that now has kind of become very commonplace and accepted as as real art. And you know, they're, you're considered a real artist as a concept artist and as a character designer working for places like Disney and ILM and and all of these big studios that are, you know, frame store, you can go on and on and on, but they're using digital tools to do it. And the art, of course, is subjective. You could call, you know, the way you mow your lawn a, a form of art in a way. Somebody might consider that. A concept artist, like a, a quote unquote pure artist might not, but again, it's subjective. It comes down to our individual perspective. So maybe it means that the way that concept art will be, will be applied in the future is not as interesting to those that are a part of it currently. You know, mm -hmm. I, myself, I, I enjoy the process that it takes and the time it takes for me to collaborate amongst multiple applications and develop ideas across different platforms and to be able to bring that all together. I enjoy that process. I don't know if, you know, when it comes to pure creation, that that AI is going to be something that for, in my own personal pursuits are going to be is going to be something that I will get much out of. But from a professional mm -hmm. capacity and what it can do and what doors it opens up, you know, I start to think about what all of these platforms and all of these tools offer us from a creative capacity to tell bigger stories, you know, to have to have to have a team of 300 people to develop a game or a film or a thing that you have a vision for isn't realistic for most people. It's a very specialized skill. It takes a lot of money and funding to be able to support. And, and in a lot of ways, I mean, and this is, again, it's my personal opinion. When you look at entertainment and you look at the things that we consume, I see so much neg negativity in my own circles on, oh, these shows and these movies and these new things aren't good, but mm. my generation's stuff was good. and. Mm. And but that I think it's easy for us to forget that that concept of the way that we view the world is is a generational thing. It happens with every generation, our generation mm -hmm. and, the, and the multiple generations that are coexisting right now just so happen to be going through a time where it's exponentially changing, changing in a way that we can't fully keep up with. And I think that's where the scary part is. It's that it's hard to grasp like where all this goes. It seems like too much. We can't we can't hold on to, to what what to what matters. But what can happen and what is i think our responsibility as, as humans is is to help shape that into something that's meaningful to us and maybe that means you don't become a concept artist anymore maybe that means that you take these these skills and abilities and use these programs and these tools to be able to make art for a different purpose we i mean you yourself are a great example in this youtube culture where a person can transition out of a, an industry and 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 develop something for yourself to help others and to help others become better artists and that in turn becomes something for you there are so many opportunities to be able to utilize all of these tool sets to get there yeah i agree and, and i i believe also that it's maybe it will have an effect in the future on our our way we work in certain areas but maybe it will not maybe we realize that or maybe a director will never be never wanted to use ai in their process maybe they want that making movies is a thing made by humans right um you see a lot of directors going back to older style of making movies these days in terms of storytelling like more slow pace less effects we had this hype of visual effects like we had this peak when visual effects got better and better they made more visual effects every year 
and more movies like think about transformers yeah. <laughs> it was like uh, exploding and doing everything everywhere and then it went back because they realized okay we actually don't want that or we want less um and i think that also can happen technically also in productions and game productions maybe there are certain things which we don't need to do anymore because ai is helping maybe like mood boards for example sometimes you always have this one person who has to make tons of mood boards for the project or tasks which are tedious maybe we can automize things that would be beautiful um if you are a um i think about there are a lot of positions where you're not like 100 an artist anymore where you only do art you have to communicate a lot you have to write emails, you have to give feedback. Maybe we can even find using AI for for the, and this is actually very interesting because when I was at THU last year, um, there was this big AI talk, of course, right? And we had a lot of great big talks and the most common thing under the people who were openly afraid about AI was that these were all people who had just want to enter the industry or new people. like who didn't even enter, they're about to enter or they're about to learn these skills um, because they also question now, why should I learn these skills when I, AI is basically taking this over for me, right? Um, and this felt a little bit like this, and this reminded me of uh, the concept art of Orc days. Why do I have to make the study when I have the photo? It was a little bit like the same question because you need to understand it because you need to know how it works. And I think even if we can make AI also creating certain perspective and we can get this prompt thing more precise and make more precise images, at the end, there's always a human being on deciding what will be in, in, in the entertainment product, right? Um, there will always be an art director who's saying, this is good, this is not good. And this art director has to have these hard skills, has to have these soft skills. So. I believe for everyone out there who is afraid of AI or and who is and someone who's uh, trying to get into the industry or try to work, really focus on your heart, like on your skills, like still learn composition, um, understand the beauty of storytelling, try to understand painting, um, take your time, enjoy painting, enjoy drawing and do that every day. And for example, also practice imagination practice creativity try to be more creative try to ask yourself how how am i be creative as a person um what mood do i get need to get into to be creative it took me years to realize that when i was in the studio i was always stressed uh, when i worked in movies we had daily deadlines right you come into the in the studio you have to do a background painting and have to be done in eight hours there's high stress every day monday to friday and then you do it for six weeks or longer until you're off the project But what I realized that I am actually the most creative when I'm relaxed, calm, when, I'm, when I don't have anything on my mind. And then I really can lose myself. I can get the most creative. But this is only me. Um, it maybe doesn't work for you. Maybe it works also not for someone else. Um, but I think these things are important because we need to understand ourselves very, very much to come to the point where we realize, okay, we just doing art out of a certain purpose and um, that we shouldn't get, we shouldn't lose our courage about things like AI. Um, but yeah, also to, to the other point, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I think that, I think that we, we still don't know what's coming. Right. Right. So, no, it, it, that's really great insight. I think that that's a, those are all really great points. And I think <coughs> something, <laughs> excuse me, something to, to leave it on there is, is maybe, maybe to say that to your point, it's actually even more important now to, to be continuing to learn the foundations and continuing to push these, these perspectives and growing, because that is what, that is what will shape the future. That is how we shape the future. Just simply adopting something because that's what somebody else says to do is not really the, the, the direction I think that would benefit us as creative people moving forward. Um, we very much have a say and, and I wanted to drop in, uh, Jigger Mancini, if I'm saying this correctly, hopefully, um, in saying that it needs to be dealt with carefully and firmly. Um, it has so much potential to be used effectively, which I completely agree with. And the current models just aren't it. 
we can't wait to see phase two. And and I, mm-hmm. I agree. I think that's a great way to think about it is that we have, this is just stage one. We are yeah. just getting started in this conversation and keep pushing and keep creating and, and don't let these things go. These are these are companion tools. These are not replacement tools. They don't have to replace you. And maybe maybe we like what's so interesting is like when I saw the first time that we can take something written for creating an image, my first thought wasn't I wasn't afraid. I thought about what can I do with it? Like just thinking about this process of ideation um, in the beginning where you start to mind map and you draw and you do and this this you need a lot of brain power for this because you really need to start to do and it's a sometimes it's a very hard process to do but let's say you just have a rough idea of something you can phrase into a sentence and then it just gives you a first visual idea it's the same as as kids when we use like um, paper magazines and we cut the stuff out and we make something out of it or we use watercolor and we try to see something in a watercolor splash um first thing I thought was, okay, how not about how it will replace me? How how can it help me to learn more? Because there's a lot of interesting things you can also observe about these outcomes of AI. Um, I use it on my own work. I, I was very fascinated by, um, about how AI was handling noise and also how it handled the movement of the eye through the image. Because... At the beginning, when I uh, when I played around with it, it like the whole image was noisy, and I learned you if you make everything detailed, nothing is detailed anymore. So mm-hmm. the eye is going everywhere, right? But somehow AI was able to create an image where it still was kind of like focusing my eye on certain areas, even though everything was noisy and so much stuff going on. But I I I. And it wasn't with contrast. I, I didn't really understood it. It was about edge control. Like the AI was really good in in controlling hard and soft and firm edges in painting. So and it creates like this noise field, but it creates these little sharp, soft contrast combinations in a way. And then you were like, ah, okay, there's something, there's something. So the interesting part for me was like, okay, how can it teach me stuff like this? How can like um, I was also f- like very surprised about um, color combinations, like color combinations I would never use, like mm. like a color like teal, for example. I did not even know that was the word for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> after I googled, like, what's the name for this color? I'm like it's teal. <laughs> All right, okay, cool, <laughs> nice. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, again, of me being a dreamer, but uh, I feel like it's 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 kind of like. Um, I, th- I think it's kind of like this, um, yeah, mystery box in a way, you know? Like we just grab into that mystery box and yeah, okay, we got got a poop or whatever. It's, right. it's like ripping ripping someone, ripping someone is not cool, um, like stealing stuff and then like uh, monetizing that is also not cool. Um, but maybe the next grab into the mystery box will be better. Maybe yeah, absolutely. You find something. I, I think the, the, those are all such great points, and and I think a great place to to leave that 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 topic of conversation. I, and I appreciate your willingness to to discuss, uh, you know, in this in this climate. But you know, we we at Magma are very much looking forward to being a part of that conversation and helping develop tools and features that can support these ideas in a positive way, as well as continuing to push our peer creation tools and, 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 and make that as a part of, of what, what we are. And we hope that, that others will do the same, that, that, that this becomes, you know, uh, maybe a new Renaissance, a new creative, a creative stage in life that we can start, you know, developing new things. And, and, you know, as I mentioned earlier on, you know, quality of content or things that people want to see, you know, I, my, my dream, you know, as an individual is that, this is now a, a time then for those people to now start to go out and do it to to create their own their own content we we are not married or or slaves to the 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 large conglomerates that are driving what content is being created we have a, a chance and an ability to create our own and these tools and, and these things give us the ability to do that if we so choose to use them for that so mm-hmm. i i really do look forward to that as uh 
Jigger Mancini said that phase two and where we're headed. I'm excited to get out of this phase and 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 see once once this conversation settles and and you know the the positive changes are being affected in places like Art Station and others that that are stepping up to help try to control that. I think there's mm -hmm. going to be more introduction of those things, particularly when it comes to art, because thankfully artists are very opinionated and have strong feelings about things. And to learn from past from the past and, and to be able to try to shape things into the future in a way that that we're we're satisfied with and that that we'd like to go in. Um, yeah, and that's also the dangerous combination, right? I mean, artists are very sensitive creatures. And when something comes in like like filling up the anxiety glass, basically, um, that it's can treat treating and uh, threatening your existence, basically, or you think it does of course um then this create a lot of noise but uh, i feel also the comment uh, murat was writing down there um is also a very interesting point M murad murad or, or murad noticed that when you when you learn chat gbt um is a great programming but you, i did not suddenly want to become a programmer so i think not everybody will not want to become a concept artist uh, that's a great that's an interesting point yeah i mean like maybe also for some people it's a realization that um they can actually like again like chat G, uh, gdp or gp gpt um is is a new thing also right i saw it in uh like people were using it to make youtube videos they were actually like i didn't even thought about that like right. people were like asking it to write scripts for youtube videos and then like YouTube, but the YouTube algorithm was banning the videos because it could see it was written by AI. Then would people would post videos about how you get it written by AI and then put it in another AI to let it rewrite. And then you post wow. it, you know? Um, so it's this, this is this crazy, crazy thing, right? Uh, but for example, like why not thinking about a video and just helping you with the starting point of an outline? Right. Um, I mean, of course, if people try to rip stuff off and they just try to make quick money and everything, everything that's quick these days or like it, it doesn't have longevity, of course. And we should look for longevity. Um, and people who try to do quick things, they will not last very long. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, it's a fascinating topic, and, and maybe we can yeah. we can we can come back and do this again in a year and and see what's changed and how things have. Yeah, <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> yeah. So I want to I want to circle back to and I appreciate all the comments and for, any, for all of you tuning in. If you do have questions for Janos that, that we're going to open up here in a moment um, to to directly ask him, uh, I do want to circle back and just take a look at your mentorship program and for all of our viewers and anybody who will see this in the future how they can find your 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 mentorship program and let's go ahead and we'll bring up your ah uh, yeah so i mean basically you can just google me or you can go on my website uh, janosch-art.zone um there you can you basically have to apply for it because i want to know a little bit about you and your past um this is very important for me uh, to get an understanding mostly about your expectation so um, when you try to achieve something, expect expectation management is really important. And um, I want to know, like, sometimes I have people who they apply and they want to achieve becoming a concept artist in a year and they draw two hours a week or something. Then I feel like, okay, we need to talk about a certain thing. Then sometimes I just have conversation with them in the chat before I actually say like, okay, you can come into the program or not. Um, it's really like, I need to filter out and see like, okay, where's your ground level? What you try to do? But mostly I want to say 80% of the application, 90% of the application are, is a very, very nice stories to hear, you know? And it really reminds me also of my past and the past of my friends who also have a different path. Like, it's so interesting, like people coming from different areas. I often get the question like, am I too old? Like I have people who came in with 40 years. My mom studied, by the way, my mom, who's an artist, she became an artist when she was 40. Like I became wow. an artist when I was 23. Um, I think also, and this is, it's still a question these days if, if age is, is a thing. No, if you want to do art, do it. 
right now, whatever age you are. Of course, if you have kids and you have things you have to take care of, it's a different ball game, but it's manageable. And I think everything is kind of like just a question of organization. Um, and I just learned it through my 80 hour weeks. You can organize everything, right? Um, of course, you need to make sure you don't screw up your plan because most people make plans, but they don't execute them. Um, right. Of course, you also need to execute this. Um, and also in the same for the mentorship, we make a plan um, together in, in these sessions for you. And then we work through it. But I, I am there to make you accountable in that way. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, at the end, it's, it's uh, a process. And I show people the path, but they have to do their own work, right? They have to push through. Um, this is very important. So, um, and I, 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 uh, I, I love all my mentees, um, but sometimes they also hate me because I really make work them hard every day. Well, that's a good thing. I, I, and I love the, I love the name mentees. That's a great, that's a great, uh, <laughs> way to simplify. Yeah. I think, you know, and, and it, it sounds, it seems uh, having observed your channel and the engagement that you're getting, that this is a very effective and it's going incredibly well. And you're getting such great viewership, and and the concept of this, I think, is such a wonderful thing to exist. Um, just for, uh, myself as a creative person, I appreciate so much that you've you've taken this on and 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 headed in this direction and made this such a, a focus of your career. It's it's very impressive and and so inspiring to see. And I hope that you know, as as the the Magma community is being introduced to you, that that you'll you know be getting some new mentees and some new people out there that are interested in in heading in this path and, and figuring out how to do this themselves. I appreciate, I appreciate all the kind words, first of all. Um, and yeah, I mean, everyone who's interested, um, uh, come by, shoot, shoot a message, uh, join our like, uh, art zone community. Like, uh, of course we, and this is also actually interesting. The community we have, um, I think we over 500 people, a bit of over 500 people on discord right now. Um, the community we have was also not planned. It wasn't a thing where I said, like, I want to create a big community. It was a natural process. I remember in 2019 or so, a year, and I, make, uh, I, I made a vlog where I did brainstorm classes. I took um, online classes at Brainstorm, and I wanted to make these classes. And it was actually the beginning of the 80-hour week because I started to realize, oh, well, if I organize myself, I can do so much. So I was doing these, I, I was working at VUGA. I was um, taking the brainstorm classes, two classes, which was like 30 to 40 hours of doing artwork for these classes. And I also was vlogging. So I was filming myself every day. And on Sunday, I was editing, uploading, and then Monday, everything starts all over. But Eventually, I hit a roadblock where I just couldn't keep up the, the vlogging anymore. I think it was after five weeks or so. So um, someone of my viewers was uh, in the comments mentioning, why don't you live stream? And I was like, yeah, well, that's that's a great idea. And with the first live stream, um, we also created a Discord server. And then with this, this Discord server, it it like people just came in and then it was just over the last years like people joining and i'm so happy to see the discord growing and growing because we have these channels um sketch channel where people just posting doodles and sketches every day but they motivate each other and then they give them each other tips and they talk about things with motivation so again we create this great safety area for people to show their work because i believe also showing your work is very important and I don't want you to think about social media here. I want to sh to say like showing your work and seeing what effect your work maybe has on others, but also um, what feedback you maybe get. And it's not all about the skill, but it's also about um, because I always think about when we kids that we doing something, we we draw something, we go to our parents and say like, hey, look at this, how look at what I what I do. Um, and it's kind of like this recognition thing, right? We want this shoulder tap or this, like, you did this very well. But I think also it, it's really important mentally for us as artists that we not get recognition, but that we, sh that we open ourselves up because otherwise we live in this bubble a bit too much. That Because in this bubble, we build up anxiety. 
we we build up of these questions like I'm not good enough. I will never become a professional. And um, what do other things like? Maybe no one will like my work, but maybe so I don't show it. So I believe it's really important that you open up and that you start to show, and then you will see like, hey, other people they struggle the same with perspective as you. Um, other people really like your work. Maybe there's something in your work which you haven't realized. I don't know how is it for you, but every time when I in the past post something on social media, which I liked, like the majority didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> right. And but when I did something which I didn't even like and wasn't sure about posting, the majority liked it more. So it's such a great point. It this really is so is. confusing. <laughs> <laughs> it is confusing, and it's such a it's such a good point to 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 maybe unpack a little bit that. And I've experienced a very similarly a, a, the a, the that that reaction, and maybe you know it's, some of it is it's like the intention to try so hard. And this is a, a challenging aspect of social media and how art is shared so broadly now and and so easily. Um, things just kind of get thrown out there, and the appreciation for art and the time spent and the work that gets put in sometimes isn't isn't always received well in, in a way that it, to your point you know you put something out you you, you love it and you you, you think that you're going to get a great reaction to it and you don't and you wonder why you know there is there is i i don't want to say an issue more to say that there's something i've observed with with artists that if you if you follow the the the, the big forums and the places where share people are sharing loads of art there's a style and a thing in a, a, a cultural interest that drives what gets what gets attention. And that's not always fun as an artist, honestly. You know, it, it can be challenging to deal with that because then you feel the pressure because a part of what this journey is and part of what being an artist is, is that you want to share your work. And I don't I think I don't think this is an ego thing as much as it is just like a a gratification thing that you want to see people like it. You know, it's, it's not fun if you're just making art and everybody's like, Oh, that's not nah, interested, you know, not for me it, that it's, it's discouraging to, to continue wanting to make art. So then in turn, the transition comes out of that is that people will make more of the same things. They'll do more superheroes. And I have friends that I have just casual conversations like this all the time that that are more um, opinionated than I am or more vocal about it, maybe more angry sometimes where they're like, they can't stand it. And, and it's like, I just want to walk out into the ocean and just never come back, you know, <laughs> and then I can understand that, you know, and my, my response always to them is that like, I'm, I'm there with you in my mind, but the only way to power forward and push forward is to detach yourself from this, you know, this, this need, um, to, to, to gain attention for something and just do things that you love and continue to do that. And you, I've found in my own pursuits that when I let go of that part and I just get into the mode of just doing stuff, I'm not so concerned with it, but then I've, I'll gain more interest or something else will positively reinforce and come back. That feedback loop will come back in some way, shape or form. And that's mm -hmm. where I get my encouragement. Now it's like, I don't mm -hmm. care about, and this is just for my own personal pursuits. It doesn't matter to me too much about sharing something that's going to get a ton of attention. But by doing so, it's like you end up actually getting what you want out of that. And it's a great kind of beautiful thing that happens. Yeah, I I cannot agree more. I mean, it's the thing is also um, when as you or as other people who are professionals, you get to a point where you do a little bit the same because like someone hires you for a specific thing you do it over and over and over and you get it better and better but it also gets monotonous to some point right so it it's not that interesting anymore so you you start to try new things at some point but why do you do that because you also want to learn new things you want to learn and learn or learning in itself is really important because it has to do how our brain is evolving. This is how, how we build new uh, neurons, you know? So that this whole process of change is very crucial to our own endeavor as a human being, I believe. So when when someone is fascinated about one thing and the other person is not, that's, that's totally, totally good. I just realized I'm like, I'm always a Mobius fan. I was always a Mobius fan. Um, since I started my art journey, but I never had really the time over the last few years to really um, sit down and ask myself, why do I like Mobius so much? 
So what I did like before Christmas, I bought myself a bunch of like Mobius comics, books about his art style, um, just to dig down and just doing that brought me so much joy cool. just by sitting in the evening on my couch for two hours just going through comic books i would never i, I would I, I like i read uh one piece or i read manga in between because i really like it right but i never thought i would buy physical comic books you know because like i don't know i, I just i didn't came to my mind to do now I bought these books. Now I get like addicted to these Mobius books um, because he make this crazy cool like. And I just found it that he's not only a great artist; he tells or he told stories really, really interesting. Like he made this short stories. That there's this one book where it's like just a lot of his short stories. And then I thought about um, Love, Death, and Robots, the Netflix series. Like it reminded me so much of this. Like where they have these like ten minute. Uh, five to ten minute short stories mm. um, and then it brought me back to making YouTube videos again in a different way because I felt inspired in my storytelling aspect you know so um, and this is just a this is just the beauty of like action you know just taking action and doing something um, and I, I like we, sp we speak about it very often uh, in the community is about motivation is good but action is more important Right, because if you're motivated to become an artist, that's great. But you need to have to take action. You have to do something, right? Um, and the best things come out of your action. So not the action is actually the good thing, but what comes out afterwards is mm. the the better thing, right? Um, it's the same as you like you look outside and you like, ah, should I go outside today? And then you you just go outside and maybe it's the best day in the whole week. But mm -hmm. if you wouldn't go outside, how how do you know? So. That's such a great point. That's such a beautiful insight. I I, I love that. I, that's such a great point, and it and it's absolutely true. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I I I don't know where where did we like. I feel I feel like we went down the rabbit hole of we creativity are, here. <laughs> we are we have gone down all the rabbit holes, sir. We yeah. have all the best ones. This, this is the kind of conversation that I love to have, and I think this is very valuable and insightful for others, especially those that are just getting started in their creative journeys, and also people like us that have been on it for quite a while. It's it's a great reminder to to have and to fall back onto, and um, I think at, at this stage. Um, it, it, we've been able to kind of go through and, and I want the magma community to, to be aware of your, your mentorship program. And <clears throat> just want to thank you so much for your time and your insights. And for all of those that have been watching, we thank you for your involvement here and, uh, your website, Janos dash art dot zone is where those can sign up for your mentorship. We've yeah, had that up uh, here. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, we just got a new joiner. Uh, <laughs> Phase curious. I love the name. Um, <laughs> hi, <laughs> just we've got just a simple hi. Well, thank you for joining. Phase is is new here. We we're just wrapping up here, but Janos, thank you so much for for everything and, and for your insights. And and let's definitely plan to come back here maybe in a year and do a uh, another conversation on the. Let's the see transition. what AI what the AI mystery box brought us and everything else. I look forward to it, man. Well, yeah. uh, again, thanks for your time. Thanks for everybody who's tuned in, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time.